and all that was in here is talking about forgiveness. It, it says, you know, when you forgive somebody, you excuse them. In the dictionary, say you excuse them. Get at them all. Look the other way when you forgive them. And I was thinking the, the most hurtful place you can, where you're going to get hurt at is where you dwell at. Your hurt is going to come from church. And then your hurt is going to come from home. Yes. Yeah. 
no, I did it. Right. So whether you know you've done wrong or not, just ask forgiveness. Yeah. And you and you'd be better off by asking for forgiveness from your brother. We're brothers in the Lord. We're brothers and sisters. We can't go nowhere. We can't get nowhere. That's why sometimes it's like we had a uh, staggering along the way. We're just in one spot the whole two months. Because we got so much unforgiveness down here. When you get here, you can't forgive me for having on my blue dress. Hallelujah. And I can't forgive you for having on your red suit. But we got to learn to forgive one another. Because if we want to see Jesus face in peace,
we're going to learn how to forgive. Because right. we don't really know how to forgive. We say we forgive, but we don't forgive. Because if we forgive, hallelujah, the power of the Lord, every time you come to this place, oh, down here, we learn how to forgive. But I'm looking at what you done done last 10 years ago. I still got it on my mind. You don't realize that God just saved me. He done filled me with the Holy Ghost. Hey, and I'm going on my way. And you still thinking about my sin. Hallelujah. But you got to forgive me. Yes, you got to forgive me. And if that, you forgive. When you forgive, they make you a good role model for Jesus. You look good in the church when you forgive. You're not forgiving for the pastor, his wife. You forgive him because you want to see Jesus. You would like to see Jesus. And forgiveness. Right. So I got a whole thing in here, ladies, for you to read up on for forgetting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And forgiveness. Yeah. So you read up on this about forgiving. Yeah. And I have some giveaways. I went to the store and I've seen some books. And without, don't look at your program. None of you, you ladies look at your program. And I want to see, and I've got to raise your hand up, don't hand it out. <laughs> Tell me, since you've been coming here all month, What's the, what's our thing? The whole thing, you gotta go to work and work. Oh, raise your hand. Now, I don't, don't look at your thing. <laughs> you know what this church is stand up and say? Interceding for the community. Nope. Oh, no, that's the girl. You almost got it right, but you left out one word. Right. So I'm going to come back to you. Sister Angie, did you listen to the program? Women of integrity, interceding in prayer for our homes, our church, our community, and the nation. There you go. that she spoke. 
Yes, that's what she said. The P. Yes, the three P.
you've done. If you're guilty, you're just guilty. And I don't have to pretend I'm blind to what you did do. You don't have to pretend that you're blind. Sometimes we hurt each other, we wound each other, we take advantage of each other, we disrespect respect each other, and then we go home with that thing in us. And that thing, like she said, that thing, first of all, you're hurt. So that was an awesome illustration about that sword, about that, or that surface thing. Some things on the surface, okay, that's on the surface. But I'll tell you what, when they do, when that wound gets deep, it don't go away like that. Come on, let's keep it real. But at the hospital, back to the hospital. Yeah. He threw that cup. Yeah. I let him walk past by. Because I know I needed God to hold my mouth until I could get my composure. That's right. So I waited. So I went in the room. I talked to John. I said, I'm going to go have a talk with him. He said, no, you don't. He said, don't do it. Because he, let me look around. <laughs> He said, you don't know the folks who killed me. He John's from the South. You know what happened to you know what happened to a lot of folk. I said, John, I'm gonna wait till I get my composure, but I'm gonna talk to him. I waited for 15 minutes because I needed to recover from what I saw. I walked down the hallway after about 15 minutes because I had got a hold of myself. Because I felt another spirit. Yeah, all right. It wasn't no demon spirit. I was angry. I walked down that hallway. He was propped up with his legs up on the desk, kicked back like he was in another world. Oh, he was talking heavy and everything. I just stood there and he just kept talking. I waited till he got off the telephone. I said, excuse me. He said, can I help you? I said, yes, you can. I said, you know that room you were in about 15 minutes ago down the hall where that black man was? He said, yes. I said, that was my husband. I said, as long as you live and breathe, don't you, don't you ever throw anything at him. I said, what you did was uncalled for, it was unethical, and it wasn't right. That man fell down on the floor. Then he begged me to forgive me because I felt like knocking him out. <laughs> now, at that time, I had published that play, Forgiving You Releases Me. Because see, sometimes we're ignorant to the truth. Forgiveness did not mean that I wasn't supposed to report him. Christian people, let's stop that stuff. Because the next person, what else would he have done? Forgiving a person don't mean you don't address the problem. Some folks say, well, just ignore it. Just pretend it didn't happen. That's not, that's not the way you deal with forgiveness. That's not the way you forgive with hurt. If somebody hurt your child, you mean to tell me if somebody come up on your property and break a window or whatever, you're not going to call the law. You're not going to get the police involved. There's a way to do it. And God gives us a way to do it in his word. Even when dealing with unforgiveness. Even dealing with hurts in the church. He gives us a way to deal with it. We don't have to be in denial. Some people say, well, I don't think you should feel that way. You don't know what I should feel. When you feel hurt, you feel hurt. When you feel sad, you feel sad. When I'm sad, then don't you comfort people that's sad. Don't you comfort people that's hurt. Don't you comfort people that's broken hearted. That's what Jesus came to do. To heal the broken hearted. He come to set the captives free. If we're bound, then he come to set us free. If we hurt, he come to heal us. Now we get ready for the dramatization. Let's say amen, because I know it's right. This wasn't my notes, this was you all notes. Thank you for them, they're awesome. I'll use them on the television program if I can get permission. Amen, praise God, God is good. Come on, give the Lord praise. Now, what we're gonna do, I got, I got two dynamic sisters here, two backups. So I'm gonna let both of y'all. Come on up, Karen. I need somebody to, uh, uh, Jared, uh, Darius, I'm sorry, Derek, come move, come give me this chair right here, son. Come, come quickly. Our time is far gone. Praise God. Grab a mic. Go on that side. Grab a mic. And put it, put it over that way, please. That's good. And we need some other mics. Brother Tim, we got any more mics? So when I lay it down, I want the next person. Okay, when I lay the mic down, the next person come and pick it up. Is that my child out here crying? 
the world, trying to get this stuff taken care of and get this paper. That is my child crying. see that you're hurt, darling. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're hurt. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And we're going to have two attackers tonight, one right after the other, because two of them are here. Listen, darling. God's going to fix it. He's going to fix it, but he's going to do it his way. You watch and see. He's going to heal you every place it hurts. Okay, but you're going to have to give it to God. I mean, don't try to take it in your own hands. You feel hurt? You feel rejected? All right. God's going to take care of it. Okay. All right. My first person. Girl, what is wrong with you? Why you let them kids bother you like that? Back in my day, I wouldn't put up with them. And you shouldn't either. Back in my day, I would call Leah. I would call Angela, and by the time we go up to that school, girl, you wouldn't have no more problems with them here. So if I was you, this is what I would do. I would get with them, and that's what you should do. You should get with them. And stop crying and dry your eyes. They ain't no better than you are. That's what you need to do is get with them. You understand what I'm saying? Get with them. Get with them, girl. And don't be letting them make you cry. Just make you a few phone calls. That's all you got to do. What's wrong with you, niece? What's up, Carrie? I don't fit in, Auntie. What you mean you don't fit in? Fit in with hood rats? <laughs> Knuckleheads? <laughs> they ain't nobody. Do you need me to go get Aunt Carmen or what? <laughs> you ain't got to take that off them. They ain't no better than you. Oh. They have the audacity. Parents still on DHS. You ain't got to take that kind of stuff. You hear? Wipe your eyes. Do you need us to go handle that situation? All right then. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, my poor child. Oh, what? I was back there. I was folding some clothes and... I couldn't believe what they were saying to you. Oh my goodness, don't you know that vengeance is not yours, honey? 
It's not yours. It belonged to the Lord. But Andy said, get rid of Don't you remember? Only a day or two ago, we was at the forgiveness seminar, and they said, do we have to forgive people? And with that comes a promise that our Father will forgive us. So we must forgive. God is so good to you. And he loves you. And it's okay. And he will handle all those situations that you might be going through. He's such a great God. And there is a scripture that I really, I really want the scripture read. And I want you to just marinate on it for a moment. And it, I'm going to have um, um, this lady that was at the seminar read it. It comes out of Matthew 6 and 44. Would you please read that, ma'am? But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wow. Did you hear what God said? Oh my goodness. His word is so refreshing. And his word is so true. And you know how much I love you and God loves you even more than I do? And honey, just wipe the tears away. I want you to just, do you mind reading this because it'll, it'll fit just right into your soul right now. Because I can see the tears. And the things that they said to you, it was not of God. We must be humble. Come as a little child unto the Lord. Would you please read that so you can just feel what God is saying to you? But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them. Read it with some enthusiasm. Read it out loud so everyone can hear. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wow. God is so good, and I'm absolutely certain that you feel better. Because God will hand, and vengeance belongs to him, totally. Not half-heartedly, but it belongs to him totally, honey. And that seminar, it, was, it had a purpose. And it was for you. It was all orchestrated by God. Honey, I guess we should, maybe we should have prayer. Did you forget? What, what? What did you just say? What did you act, what did you just say? Did you forget Uncle Ray? <laughs> you must be out. have forgiveness in your heart. We want you to understand that you don't fit in because you are highly favored and chosen. You are someone so special that God knows the number of hairs on your head. You are so special that the Father created you uniquely your own. Oh, did he love us so. Then he gave us all something so special. And he gave up his only begotten son. I want you to always remember, though he slain, yet will I trust him. I don't care if the world stands against you. When God be for you, he's more than the world against you. There, turn against you. It's because in a room full of darkness, there's a light that stands all alone. Who is so special to our Father that He stretched them out that we could be free and have 
chance at a second life. Alone 